Well, Danko, welcome to the channel. Thank you for, for coming. Now, you, you're a journalist. Tell us whereabouts in the world you are, please. I'm in Croatia, in Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. Uh, probably most of the people in Europe knows relatively where it is. Uh, I'm not sure about the rest of the world. Um, small, up to four million inhabitants, small country. Uh, we say for ourselves that partially we are part of middle Europe and mm. partially on the Mediterranean. Actually, we have a, a, a larger portion of Adriatic Sea coast, but it's it's in a, in a broader Mediterranean basin. So basically middle European uh, Mediterranean country. Mm. So a bit, a, bit, a bit south of Austria, a bit south of... Um... Uh, that's right. Between, bit south of Hungary. between us and Austria, there's a small Slovenia as well, but on our northern borders are Hungary, um, on the on the eastern side, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, on the other side of Adriatic is Italy. So that's it. Mm. So we want to talk about the, the, your experience of the pandemic, but, but th there's a lot of recent history, isn't there, in Croatian region? So most people remember the war in 1991, for example. Uh, I mean, the, the, the very tragic situation. But how, how are things now? Well, let's say that well, actually the war ended '95. Then we had some transition period to reintegrate uh, some parts, secessionist, secessionist, sorry, parts of Croatia until beginning of '98. And we can say from the first days of two, 21st century, 2000, year 2000, it was transition period for Croatia. We we are a little bit behind the rest of Eastern Europe in terms of transition because they started with the Berlin Wall fall. After that, we had a war. We had uh, the war ongoing for four and a half years and then some as well the transition period for reintegrating, as I said. And 20 years of transition, we are now part of uh, NATO since 2009, part of uh, EU, the last, last country to join EU, as a matter of fact, on uh, July the 1st, 2013. Unfortunately, we, we now see uh, some some countries leaving uh, EU, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. It is what yeah. it is. Yeah. So uh, that's what it, how it is. Uh, economy still struggles. We are a little bit behind our neighboring Slovenia, definitely far behind Austria, Italy, definitely Germany. So we are, we are let's say, somewhere in the neighborhood of Hungary, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, economy, uh, standard of living, and so on. And uh, unfortunately, and we will go into details more after we talk about coronavirus pandemics, too, too much, we are too much dependent on tourism and hospitality branches yeah. of the economy. And that's, that's obviously, it's been hit hard for the past 10 months. And it, but it is an intensely beautiful country. Uh, yeah, the southern parts, the coastline is definitely mm. probably one of the, the be most beautiful parts of Europe. Uh, hundreds of islands, bigger, yeah. smaller. Uh, probably a lot of people heard about Dubrovnik, also yeah. split the islands of Kvar, Brač, and so on mm. and so on. Mm. Istrian, yeah. Istrian Peninsula, so on. Yeah. Mm. I went there once a long time ago. <laughs> um, so. so um, the, the, the number of cases of coronavirus has been going up really quite substantially in the past few weeks. But just before we do that, how did you get on in the first wave, sort of March, February, March, April time? Well, that's interesting. We actually, by all accounts, did very well in mm. the first wave and mm. not doing very well in, let's say, second wave mm. since mid to late October. Um, we was one of the first countries in the region to impose first measures. I, I remember uh, in February, I went on the business trips to Slovenia. Yeah. Our new, new, newly elected president uh, had the first meeting with the Slovenian counterpart on February. And then I saw, uh, when we crossed the border, I saw the huge lines of trucks coming, trying mm. to come into Croatia. And I didn't know what's going on. And it was the first uh, kind of more strict measures controls for trucks from Italy, because then the northern Italy was the first cluster or the major cluster in Europe. And obviously, uh, our government imposed uh, a stricter control on the borders. What was funny when I came to the, to the, by the location that I was uh, covering the event, the Slovenian government was opposed to that measure. They opposed to those measures and tried to 
to persuade the Croatian government to withdraw from the strict control. They're saying the economical reasons are the econ economy, economy will suffer, that uh, trucks standing on the border will there would be a damage for the goods and so on. But as I find out that the, my fellow Slovenian journalists were actually worried more than their government that they were saying, well, shouldn't we do the same on mm -hmm. the borders with Italy and Austria? And that's how it started. Actually, we were quite among the first who, who did some uh, strict measures and we went into a very strict lockdown very, very early. And uh, up until the summer, we had a mild uh, progression in numbers of infected people and deaths and so on. And then, of course, uh, we had the reasons to ease the measures during the summer, as I said, because of the tourism. Yeah. Uh, I think we achieved about 40 to 50 percent of uh, a normal <laughs> tourist season in terms of numbers. And that probably uh, led to people let their guard down afterwards. And now we have one of the worst numbers in Europe. In Europe, so, in Europe. Yeah. yeah. So, so there was good social compliance at first. People yes. were obeying the measures. But then over summertime, people got a bit tired. They wanted to make some money. And uh, yeah. uh, so what's social compliance like now? Are people wearing masks? Is there good social distancing now? Yeah. At this point, uh, there are also now almost the same strict measures as in the beginning of the spring. But... Uh, the businesses are not shut down the same way as it was mm. previously because of the economical reason. But the restaurants, bars are closed. They are now uh, debating will they sh uh, shut down the shopping malls. But uh, essential uh, you know, market and, uh, and uh, uh, st stores for the essential goods will be open. They say that, that, that it's, of course the yeah. people need, need to yeah. buy food and everything. But be, uh, people go to work if they can do from uh, do their job from home. They they are uh, obviously encouraged to do so. But as you can see, I'm I'm in my office actually on my mm. uh, television station because I have to go. So uh, yeah, people are mostly complying. Obviously, uh, people are tired because of the measures. Yeah. Because uh, as you said, after the summer came and the numbers were low. People actually wanted to feel a little bit more relaxed. They went on beaches. In the, uh, unfortunately, the night bars were open. The nightclubs were open. Um, weddings went on. Uh, um, huge gatherings of several hundred people on the weddings and so on. And that was probably the mistake that, that people felt, a lot of people felt like, anyway, it's not that big of a deal. And now mm. we see by the numbers that it is. And Croatia, the, the, the per capita numbers now are amongst actually the highest in the world at the moment. It's, there's been a dramatic acceleration. Also true of the countries round about, immediately round about. Um, is there a lot of travel between adjacent countries uh, uh, across the borders? Uh, that was probably one of the reasons why we have uh, a strong impact of the second wave. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people in the bordering areas with Bosnia and Herzegovina and even mm -hmm. Serbia... Uh, even have dual citizenship. So right. You, okay. Yeah. So you have you have a significant number of Croats living in Bosnia having Croatian passport. Oh, I see. So you you cannot you cannot say you cannot enter because this is their country as well in terms of citizenship, dual citizenship as well. Some of the mm. people living in Serbia have dual citizenship, uh, who who are ethnic Serbs but have relations mm. with Croatia. They have also the papers documents of Croatia. So mm -hmm. they are your citizens. You cannot just block them like you can do for citizens of different countries of, of the, uh, yeah. any other country. So that was also, we know that uh, at this point as well in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the, the, there is no, uh, ne nowhere near the same measures as in Croatia. So the bars are open. As far as I know, two days ago, yeah. the bars are still open in Bosnia. And they can come here as some of them as a Croatian citizen or even others like on business trip or something like that. So that that contributes. It just shows it's a global pandemic. And, and in, in some way, we're, we are as strong as the weakest link. Yeah. And you've got weak links very close to you and cross border travel, which is, is yeah. bit, which is why we've got a pandemic. Of course, if, if there wasn't trans border travel, we wouldn't have a pandemic. It would have been localized. This, this is why Australia was so successful. They closed off the individual Australian states, didn't allow travel between the states. But you, you, you've explained why, why that is so difficult there. So, uh, the, one question that interests me, um, 
do, do people in Croatia go out and get the sun? Do, do, do they? Uh, are they? Do they like sun, or you know, do they get sun all over the body to make some vitamin D in summertime? Uh, yeah, definitely. The, during summertime, uh, exposing to sun is uh, almost a tradition. You know, uh, okay. during all over the coastline, there's a lot of beaches. People are seeing ourselves as a ourselves as a country with tourist tradition, uh, sun, beaches, warm sea, so on. Of course, now we don't have maybe the similar weather as in, in, in your parts of Northern England, but definitely we have a lot of days with fog, rain, so almost no sun at this point. As, as far as I know, a lot of people know that the vitamin D is important, but didn't know then at the beginning of the pandemics. And that's, that's the information that maybe came to the people too late in a way. <laughs> is that information there now? Or I mean, people won't be making vitamin D now because it's 10 degrees maybe there now. So is it? Exactly. Even not 10. It's four or five today. Right, okay. So, Same yeah, as here. Well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to the southern parts now after this conversation. I'll go there and they'll, they'll be like 12 on the coastline, northern coastline of Croatia. But that's only just a few, you know, a couple of uh, cities or, or uh, regions that have much milder or warmer temperatures. So on the north, it's maybe the same temperature like in, in, in England. Yeah, people now, as far as I know, I spoke a lot of, about that uh, with a lot of people that I know. They say, yeah, I go on the sun. I know about vitamin D. I take the vitamin D supplements, but they never heard anybody saying that in March, April and, and May. Mm. I heard that from you in your on your channel. Mm. But, yeah, but if people seem to be taking the initiative themselves on this rather than coming from governments. In the UK, the government has been very weak leadership on vitamin D. But now when you go into the supermarket in an afternoon, the vitamin D shelf is usually sold out. So, you know, yeah, yeah. people are acting on that. Yeah. So is, is, is Croatia, um, is, is it a very sort of family orientated culture? Do you get multi-generational households with grandparents, parents and children all in the same small area? Exactly. Uh, still, uh, as I, far as I know, a lot of people still live with multi-generational uh, households. You can find a household with three generations. Mm. So a grandma, yeah. parents, and one or two grand grandchildren or yeah. children of these parents yeah. are still yeah. living under the same roof. Yeah, and, and this is yeah. necessary because we are we are dealing with not it's not not poor country but you, you're not it's not a wealthy country by any means it's definitely not the same economical situation as in united kingdom or netherlands germany so and people do not tend it's even different mentality do not tend to to leave their home at, when they're 18 19 and they're finished their school and they already start to work still mm -hmm. it's a lot of family values traditional values that say okay my children are now not dependent on me, but they can still stay with me at home and uh, live with me. Of course, the, the amount of money they earn, the salaries are also, in, you know, contributing to that decision. But even some people that can, that can leave the house, they still remain there because of the family values and tradition. Mm. I assume traditionally the diet in Croatia is good with a lot of fish. But um, there's not that many fish left in the Mediterranean now, is there? It's not, it's no. not like it used to be. It's, uh... No, no. I heard that for many years now, from strictly from fishermen, say that we cannot, we cannot uh, fish anything. There's in Adriatic, there is no more fish. Uh, we have fish, and uh, you know the production of fish. Of course, it's not the same as uh, the one that are caught in yeah. the sea. But there are available fishing uh, products or sea seafood. But uh, to catch a fish in the sea, it's very sparse now. Mm. I mean, it's, it's a very underreported uh, ecological emergency, the Mediterranean, re really. The, it's just been mm. fished out. It's a terrible situation. Mm. Now, wh wh what's the health care provision like in Croatia? Have you got good hospitals? Is there plenty of nurses and doctors? Uh, well, at this point, they're saying that uh, we are closing to the crisis, the real crisis that the hospitals, because of the pandemic, are full. I think yesterday the news was the central uh, clinic for infectious disease in Zagreb is full, completely full. They will not admit anybody anymore. So really? really? Wow. Really, nobody yeah. is uh, available anymore. So uh, they have other hospitals that are now made COVID-19 hospitals. And even the biggest uh, sports hall in Zagreb, Arena Zagreb, is uh, prepared. And since I think 
week or ten week ago, ten days ago, the first people came there. Th that's that's the facility for those who are close to discharge from hospital. So they are at the end of the, the not the serious cases, obviously. But uh, we are very much closing to the end of our hospital capacities. Uh, healthcare is not at a great state all over, even before this. Uh, there's been a crisis with unpaid, um, uh, you know, unpaid orders for medicines and, and, and medical supplies a couple of weeks ago. The health state, what we, what we have here as your NHS in Britain, uh, did not pay the huge amount of money to the suppliers, uh, to the, the biggest suppliers of medical provisions and the medicines, and they were threatening even to, to end the supply chain. Of course, it didn't happen, but there was you know, during the negotiations, even those those uh, information came out so far, so good. Uh, everybody claims that we have very good experts. Some of them even went abroad and works in mm, the UK and advise uh, Croatian government mm. on these issues. But uh, there are limited numbers of people working in healthcare industry, I mean, healthcare service. And of course, some of them are infected and uh, staying at mm. home or now receiving treatment themselves. Mm. I mean, of course, you, you can fit out a, a sports hall. That's not too yeah. much of a problem. So who's going to staff it? Where are the nurses, the doctors, the pharmacists, the, yeah. the, you know, the, the people that are going to work there is the problem. Um, yeah. so, so drug supply is OK at the moment. What about oxygen supply? You, you, do you know, does, does, does Croatia make its own oxygen, yeah. do you know? Uh, never heard of any information about lack of that supply. So yeah, I don't good. know much about details, but uh, didn't heard that it, there's any... Mm any danger of not having that. Yeah. But of course, as you're well aware, the increasing number of cases is going to feed through to more critically ill patients in the next week or two or three. So the pressure on the hospitals is going to get greater by the end of December, beginning of January. That is, that's inevitable. That's going to happen. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah. what we're really hoping for is the situation where sick people don't get turned away from hospital. That's, this is the risk. And, uh, it sounds like it's a real risk in Croatia. Uh, well, it's the beginning of winter. I mean, in terms of weather, uh, mm. this is the winter weather, winter time uh, in terms of December. But it's the beginning of December, basically mid-December, not yet. So what will happen at the end of the 2020, at the beginning of 2021? I think it's going to be really, really hard. Uh, probably a lot of people <laughs> expecting vaccine to... To solve the problem but that won't happen uh, for several months no well, what are the plans for vaccine in croatia do you know uh, we are part of the deals that the european union made so uh whatever happens yeah we, yeah we are expecting no. european uh, medical agency to give their say on 29th as as far as i know and yeah. then probably as far as as i know a lot of countries are planning start the vaccination for the beginning of January, probably Croatia will be among them. The European Medicines Agency has been very slow. As you know, the UK has authorised it, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Canada, start vaccinations in a day or two's time. And the United States, of course, have organised it now. It does seem, uh, it's authorised in the United States now officially, so it does seem a bit slow for the European Medicines Agency, which is a pity. But now, um, is Europe going to be sharing this vaccine out equitably on, on a population basis? So, so or, or are, are, are Germany and France and Belgium and Holland going to keep it all for themselves? Uh, as far as I know, European Union will uh, uh, share that equitably. And uh, it will it will be, of course, the first vaccinations everywhere will probably be the, the those who are uh, the more high, highly uh, danger, in danger because mm. of the comorbidities and the age factor and the health workers. And so I think the plans are pretty much everywhere the same. Well, th this is this is really good news. So it means Croatia will get an allocation of vaccine based on its population size. Yes. Uh, and can make a start with that straight away. Yeah. And, and of course, I I'm very optimistic about the uh, the Moderna vaccine should be agreed soon, I would think. And, and the AstraZeneca, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is going to be a lot cheaper. Yes. And, uh, and Europe, Europe has booked, I think, two or three hundred million doses of that. So, yes, as far as I know, European Union made the deals with all of those, yeah. and they are uh, the numbers are highly in hundreds of millions doses yeah. altogether. It depends which one will came first on the on the supply 
through the supply chain of European Union and after it was it will be and which one will be in which time span will be approved by EMA. Yeah, but, but of course, as we know, the problem is that the herd immunity effect from the vaccine is not going to be with us till really March, April time. It's this winter that's going to be the, 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 the critical time. Yeah. So, so um, but I'm sure everyone watching wishes you and have you been well personally? Have you kept UK healthy? I've been well. I uh, haven't experienced any of the of known symptoms of COVID-19. I've been in relatively close contact with two persons who uh, later on uh, developed uh, mild to mid symptoms of, of COVID-19, uh, but I, I haven't been tested. I didn't. I wasn't recognized as a as a con close, really close contact. It was all on the open of the of the exteriors not in the interior, all the contacts were not made in-house, uh, so I was mm. probably uh, saved because of that. Um, I'm, I'm generally feeling fine. I'm, I, was, I checked my health on a regular health check like a month and a half ago, and I'm healthy altogether, very good for my age, let's say, so probably my immune system is relatively okay. I would say so. Maybe I even contracted a small amount of virus and didn't develop symptoms because Possible. there's a, there's a lot of people around me that had it. So so. Indeed. Who knows? Are, are you taking vitamin D? Uh, I take combinations, the cocktail of vitamins. So in, in yeah. inside it's vit vitamin D as well. Yeah, the the, the 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 multivitamins. There's not really strong evidence for that. The, the vitamin ah, okay. D is the one where the the evidence is there. Oh, okay. And with, uh, with, a health, with a healthy diet, most people aren't deficient of other vitamins. Vitamin D is kind of the exception because you don't really, unless you've got a very high fish diet, um, you don't get you don't get it from the sun. So whereas vitamin C, you'll get it from tomatoes and you, I see. You know, I see. Uh, well, it's, it's vitamin D that people tend to be short of. I today I have a fish a fish meal for lunch, so probably will increase a little bit of vitamin D. <laughs> little, little but bit, I did yeah. I didn't know that that the multivitamin uh, stuff did do not work so so well. So I'll I'll try yeah. take vitamin D separately. Yeah, I, I'm taking about two thousand units of vitamin D a day. I, I, I mean. know I saw that on your channel. Yeah, it's very kind of you. Thank you very much for giving up your Saturday morning. I know you. I know you're on a busy schedule. Um, no, no problem. Thank you, John, uh, and, for this, and of course for everything that you've done through through this channel and. To your appearance in media, in the media as well. Yeah. So for you done for for informing and educating people on this uh, obviously uh, challenging times. Thank you. Well, th th thanks for having me. And of course, if you if you want another interview, we're more than happy to more than happy to do that. Thank you. Yeah, great. Th thanks very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too.